One of the most common questions I hear is, when do we operate on an aneurysm? And uh, there's no simple answer, but uh, because every person is different. But I think the simplest way to answer that question, first of all, is we operate when we think that the risk of surgery is less than the risk of having a life-threatening complication from the aneurysm. So, uh, and depending on where your aneurysm is involved, or if your dissections become an aneurysm, uh, depending on, on, uh, on the pattern of how it's happened, uh, we can predict when it's at risk for rupturing. And so the good thing, the great thing is, is that we can offer operations to repair a severely diseased portion of the aorta really, really safely in most people. And so when you have an aneurysm that's not big enough to operate, it's often because we're balancing it against a risk of surgery that's in the single digits kind of percentage. So uh, most aneurysms we can fix with the risk of, of death or stroke or heart attack of the surgery at 5% or less. And so when an aneurysm isn't big enough to operate, it's because the risk of it rupturing is less than that. Hopefully that provides some reassurance. What we do know uh, about specific locations of aneurysms and the sizes of when we operate are when the aneurysm involves the ascending aorta, the first portion of the aorta, the percentage chance per year of having that aorta dissect or rupture is really low when the aorta is three or four or even five centimeters. And it's usually not until we get out to about six centimeters that we see that curve take off. It's never zero because some people with even normal sized aortas will have a dissection or a rupture of their aorta. But with our ability to predict when the first portion of the aorta will rupture or dissect, we can recommend surgery most of the time at about 5.5 centimeters. Now, that applies to sort of all comers with aortic aneurysm disease. We know that there are some subgroups of patients, for example, people with a significant family history of aneurysm disease, uh, people with connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome or Lois Dietz syndrome or a bicuspid aortic valve, where we think that this curve is shifted to the left a bit. In those people, we recommend operating sooner, generally around five centimeters. We know that this is an imperfect science, however, and we're trying to get better about it. And so there are some other tools that we use to help recommend when to operate on the aorta. Because, for example, we know that the aorta in a man who's six and a half feet tall shouldn't be the same size as a woman who's four foot 11. And so uh, we use uh, a, a, another tool uh, which is applicable in folks with connective tissue disorders or a family history where we look at the maximum aortic diameter, or uh, excuse me, maximum aortic area, which is calculated from a patient's diameter as pi r squared, divided by their height in centimeters. And if that ratio is greater than 10 in someone with a bicuspid valve or connective tissue disorder, then we may lower the threshold to operate even further. Depending on how tall you are, sometimes that may mean operating on an ascending aorta that's 4.8 centimeters or, or similar to that. Uh, one special category of patients are those with Lois Dietz syndrome where the recommendation is to operate on the ascending aorta when it's 4.2 centimeters, uh, especially if they've had a family history of dissection or rupture.